one of my favorite things about the East Metro Tea Party is we have an activist who didn't know what to do to get involved in politics back in 2009, so he said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sign. I'm going to put it up on, on my road. I'm slipping my mind what the road's called. Glenwood? Glen Road. And he, uh, he was told and informed by city <laughs> officials that his sign was too big and he had to take it down or uh, uh, comply with the uh, local city ordinance. So he did that. And so every week he's got a new sign. It made its way to the state fair. It got a lot of retweets. It's getting a lot of Facebook shares. It's really brilliant. Some of them are very funny. Some of them are just real clever. Needless to say, Craig usually does this every month. He shows his last uh, four weeks of signs. He's got a good presentation to go with that. So without further ado, Craig the Sign Guy. I think most of the people in here have already signed up, but the sign up sheet's here and we'll pass all around. Uh, first slide. So this is sign number 191 about the, the Grinch that stole uh, presents from Whoville. We have a president that does this. President Grinch, be kind, give our health care back. Whoville. <laughs> now, the real story of Whoville had a pleasant end ending. He gave all the presents back. I think our health care story is going to be a different one. I don't see us getting our health care back anytime soon. Next one, sign 192. So this was a, a day I was making the sign. It was 10 below. <laughs> Love big oil. They will keep you warm, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And uh, in the email I sent out, I went through about why oil companies and production of oil, uh, all the good they've done and, and why they're moral. And if you really want to um, dig into this topic, there's a, there's a guy that speaks. His name is Alec Epstein. He has a website called industrialprogress.com. And he is, uh, is working with all of the oil companies, uh, the, the coal industry, making moral arguments about the goodness of energy. Uh, he's a really, really great guy. He'll be on uh, John Stossel's show. I think in two weeks he's uh, on John Stossel's show. 193. Lumps of coal for them all. <laughs> and, you know, Jake was doing this thing about the ship and environmentalism, so rather than a lump of coal in your shoe, maybe you get a, a mini windmill this last week. <laughs> so those are, I'll show you the fourth sign at the, at the end. But what I want to talk about is real money versus funny money. And I had mentioned this in the speech that I gave on freedom, uh, last month, and uh, I always was kind of frustrating when, when the government talks about hundreds of billions of dollars or a trillion dollars, is that you can't conceptualize what that amount of money is. And I heard all these, these clever analogies like, well, let's see, if you've spent a million dollars a day since Jesus was born, we will spend a hundred trillion or one trillion dollars in the year 27 or 2745. That's that's the rate. But I I just never could relate to that. Or there was one about a jet plane flying at the speed of sounds uh, with dollar bills and how many years it would have to fly. Uh, or this one, if you printed thousand dollar bills, which have been obsolete for a long time. But if you did that and stacked them up, the stack of bills would be 68 miles high. That's a trillion dollars. But the thing about money is money is created by real work. work. And uh, so those analogies just never, never worked for me. And, you know, I used to work at a, at a company. I'm, I'm now retired just down the street on 94, that one with about four. 14 stories on. Uh, and my job as a business director was creating seven or eight million dollars worth of new profit every year. And we had an organization of about 200 people that did that. And the trouble with doing that is you always lost about two or three million that you had to make up. And 
you know, the organization, average employee probably worked 50 hours a week. I worked 60, 70, and in crisis, I worked 80 hours a week. And that was real work that created that money. I also had a harder job. In 1974, I worked as a carpenter in Minnesota, outside building apartment buildings. So, but that's real work and, and, and you all do real work and you have to relate. When you hear about government spending, relate it to real work. So this next slide, and I wrote an editorial about this and uh, that was published, I think, in the St. Paul paper. And Michelle Bachman, in one of her speeches, used the information uh, from that editorial. But what this is, is this is the Fortune 500 companies. So you can see the top 10 there, and this is for 2012, and the profit that they created. So you think about the work that you do, and magnify that by, and I don't know what the employment of the Fortune 500 is, it's probably 20 million, 30 million people, something like that. And you can see the bottom five just as, a, as an example. But the wealth created by all of those people working, the profit created was $819 billion. That's how much profit was created. And you can see on the bottom there, in 2011, it was 824. Profit of the Fortune 500 actually went down in 2012. So just, so I'm gonna use that as an index to kind of compare versus government spending, and, uh, and that'll be the next slide, but before we go there, in the news, and I heard it, um, today, and in the coming week, you'll hear a lot more about extending unemployment benefits. Last week, there was an uh, article in the Wall Street Journal that said, if we extend unemployment benefits from 26 weeks, which it normally is, to 99 weeks, which it currently is, that just expired, the cost is only $25 billion. And this, uh, there was a guy from a university, an economist, he said, well, this is a trivial amount. This is, this is a no-brainer. So you look at $25 billion, it's six years of profit of 3M company down the street. That's how much it is. It's not a trivial amount. It's a real amount. It's real work. If you compare it to, look at Walmart here, $17 billion. Walmart has two million employees, two million employees working to create $17 million. $25 million is not a trivial amount. So, so when you hear all these numbers related to some kind of index like this that, that represents real work. So next slide, Kurt. So if we call the Fortune 500 profit 1x, Government is spending 4.3 times all the profit created by the Fortune 500. It's just unimaginable how much we spend. And they borrow 1.3 times the profit. So not only do they spend 3x, they borrow 1.3x of it. So if you compare this then with our government debt, our government debt is 21 times the profit of the Fortune 500 companies, or it's 21 years of profit. And the last one, and there's a big debate about this, about unfunded liability, is I'm using the number of $90 trillion. There's other numbers I've seen estimating that it's 150 or $180 trillion. But at 90 trillion, it's 110 years of profit of the Fortune 500 companies. And it's, I mean, it's an astronomical number. And, you know, a rational person would look at this if, if the United States was a corporation, you think, well, we're bankrupt. We're way over bankrupt. But the government doesn't do a comedy like that. Uh, a corporation would have to accrue all this money on their books. The corporation, or the, the government doesn't have to, they just uh, print money. And Dave later will be talking about the 100th anniversary of printing money and the creation of the Federal Reserve. So I just wanted to, to share that with you. Um, 
as just a point of reference when people talk about money related to something about real worth and about companies making profit. So the last uh, sign, so this was 194. So in 2013, I had something similar, but my resolution was to help save Western civilization. This year I thought, maybe I should sc scale that back a little bit and just save America, help save America. You know, and actually diet and exercise are, are pretty hard, uh, our goals. Uh, only 45% of people make resolutions and of the resolutions made, only 8% accomplish their goal. So we have a lot of work to be done about saving America. You know, we're in a constitutional crisis, we're in a financial crisis, uh, a lot of other kinds of crises. And anybody that cares about America uh, cannot remain on the sideline in, in 2014. I mean, we all have to step it up and really, really fight. So here's to wishing a great 2014.